to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness. It's very important. Classic um, story is the story of Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46. I don't want to go into it. Forgive me, I'm rushing because we're just, this is a revision series. I'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom. These are the truths we engage. If you don't engage this, you will fail. I tell you sincerely, they are not opinions. They are not doctrinal perspectives. When Jesus came, he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes, teaching them the ways of the kingdom. It's, it's important that we understand the methodologies of God. It's not, the discourse, it's not an invention of one man. Please understand this. Jeremiah 6, I believe, verse 16. Let's go there and then we'll return here. Jeremiah 6, 16. The Bible says to ask for the ancient path. It says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Wherein is the good way? It says when you find it, walk therein and ye shall find what? Rest. Another word for rest is Sabbath. The Sabbath of a man comes. The Bible says labor to enter your rest. That labor is not a labor in the flesh. It's a labor of understanding, understanding, understanding that there is a belief system, there is a construction. When you hold the keys of the kingdom, they can bring you in experience to your Sabbath. So two people, all saved by God, can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results. And the difference is not the love of God for them. For the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is their understanding. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, have I not said ye are gods? And all of you, not some of you, are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So your destiny is not just left to God. How can I lie, Sharia? Whatever will be, will be. Those wise sayings are poisonous. Are we together? The law of value. Very, very powerful. You will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out. To sit with kings. Your value decide who, decides who pursues you. It is true. And who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward. God designed life to operate based on a reward system. There's no sentiments to it. Life operates based on a reward system. That means that no matter how bad my background is, no matter how bad it was, there is a bailout system. I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world 
does not have too many people who are valuable. Please understand this. Potentially, we all are. But in experience, there are few people per territory. You can, you can do a random sampling. There are few people per territory who are really valuable. So it's impossible to be ignored. It's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you there is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life. There is more than that. There is a life of meaning and glory and beauty. He has called us into glory and virtue. He has called many sons into glory. Where your life becomes an influence for his majesty. Your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. He says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so must you. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. 
being an Igbo person gives you, being a northerner gives you, being a middle belt, a south, a southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It says, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Abba! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it. They will come and say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, for he will teach us his ways. It says, for from Zion, out of Zion shall proceed the law. Not into Zion, out of Zion. Say I'm valuable. It's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you. Shake that off and know that there is a way. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. 
Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture officially was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current results. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it's walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother who said the head of John the Baptist. 
and the head of John the Baptist went. There are things that should not happen that you can make happen. And there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening. Praise. When you praise God, it's called perfected praise. Praise that is intentional. Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horse is and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Yes. Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice sacrifice is very powerful psalms 50 and verse 5 i'm just doing a quick recap we have all these teachings you can go and listen to them gather unto me my saints the bible declares they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice there are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered sacrifice the Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth, and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. Sacrifice is powerful. You can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time, the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0, .00, 0.00. Carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. 
not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law, spiritual law, the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny help us. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Please understand this. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. We are relational beings. In fact, the faith work starts with a relationship. A relationship with Jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth. Relationships matter in this life. Please listen. When you master relationships, you will tame life like a dog. I wish I had the time. But let's look at just one scripture. Second Samuel chapter 9. It's a long reading. I don't know if we can look at it. Second Samuel chapter 9. We'll start from verse 1. Destiny help us. There is, there is a teaching... And David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Is a son, but it's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, where is he? And he said, behold, he is in Laudeba, and so on and so forth. Verse 5, let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel from Laudeba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. 
Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant? That thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Ah! What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah, none like you. What are you turning to say? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater. My God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No. It's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9. We are reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. 
and then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Halus Kaprando Kashubria. Who's, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel. Because he will always remember Abraham. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth. In a desert land yet they are prosperous. Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living. Find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest, Potiphar, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere. And he still gave him as a wife. And in, in the land of Goshen, the people, it was when there was another Pharaoh 
who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by God you will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a i mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people i'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer lord send me gifted people make my life easy you have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so, so 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 person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and i tell you sincerely and i i i, I stand broken before god to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people has saved me the stress of any other thing I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child Lord send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne they love you because of who you are the flat tree of success can kill People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem. Because he needed to die a curse. Not just to die a man. Curse is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so if he died on the way that's not redemption that's obituary and then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene the black man the nigger and he the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David, they saw him hiding and they said you will become our king. 
it's not everybody that is looking for results there are people who will stay with you as the landlord is driving you they will stand there and say no i will not run away men are selfish by design please every leader hear me you need to trust god for the grace for real burden bearers men and women who can cry with you they can say hosanna but when you're on your way to the cross you will only see mary and john there burden bearers there are men of god when they are, we start building project everybody just runs away when the building is completed people come and dance again to acknowledge god burden bearers even the disciples ran away but there was a woman who said let me risk my life i'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body i hope you know that was why she went she carried to go and purify his body what if she died on the way a burden bearer will be like roof to naomi your god will be my god and your people will be my people many people when they're in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor i love you i will stand by you all the way are we together i'm robber steal from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen there are burden bearers again i thank god for the privilege you know many men of god for many men of god their greatest fear in fact many successful people their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad i tell you god has taken that fear out of my life god has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people god has put in my life that i know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given Something I am There's no need to cry Cause you're always with me You're my father My everything Listen You must pray to God And cry That there be Burden bearers will look at your wound Listen, listen Please sit down, we'll pray shortly Listen, the Bible talks Jesus himself was teaching and jesus spoke about a man and robbers were laid that man are we together and he was on the a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church a pharisee came and left him but there was a man called good samaritan no name good samaritan he was identified by where he was coming from his territory and his character good samaritan and the man sat down he bandaged this man took him to a private inn to keep him and said i will take care of him i'm about to go and do something when i come back whatever the cost is that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work and say, ah, what is this you mean he has been writing Wayek for five years 
I will conduct a personal tutorial. When you see a burden bearer, you will think they charm them. They will carry your own load on their own head. You are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer, you have entered the Sabbath. The person may not be a millionaire. He will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life to choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who are raised by the Spirit. Financial burden bearers. Credibility burden bearers. There are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children, but they raised up to 50 children of other people. And these people in old age will be in the hospital. Are we together now? Looking for one million for a treatment. And all those 40 people they raised, not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your crying to weeping. That's his assignment. To insist till you laugh. Why are you about to go away? So I'm in 200 level. My father just died. My mother just died. They don't sit down and say, I will from the same village. That's not a burden bearer. It's your, what was your father? Did he know my father? Mm. I stand and I say this. Come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number i will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers. That's why they don't announce we have a project of, you know, God designed men to be burden bearers. This crying on stage for money every week. No. A real burden bearer will sit down and find needs. Why is this pastor's shoe removing? That shoe, would the pastor would never wear that shoe again. Had this shoe, no, no, it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we noticed that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer May your wife be your burden bearer, husband. And may your husband, may, may, what's the next one now? May your husband be a burden bearer, wife. Be, because, listen, let me tell you, if your spouse is not a burden bearer, you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital. You've seen these things happen. Some persons are in the hospital, some people are selling their property, hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you would die. 
Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the Spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly. These are the things to think about. Father, is this person a burden bearer? Not for now, for the days that come. There are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man. He can't talk, he can't walk, yet she's laughing. They say, say something about your husband. Say, even if we return in this life, I want him to still be my husband. That's a burden bearer. My generation, hear me. Open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life. Burden bearers. In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, look, this and that and that and burden bearers. The Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Ah. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, it will go home after the grace. mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above honor what is honor honor is the discerning please listen five minutes and we're done honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching 
that I did at the King's Court, RCCG, the King's Court. Listen to it. I spoke on the book of Esther. The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We're still at that. The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and, you know, show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends. And Vashti refused. When she refused, the king, being a very good man, he kept quiet with the issue. But then the advisors of the king said, uh, 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 uh. This woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman. If you permit this dishonor, our wives and our women will start the same thing too. Do something about it and Vashti is banished are we together that means everything was in place in a palace the throne is still there the treasures are still there but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there her man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene 3 a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan, are we together now? The little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pasu. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen and she declared a fast because of the threat of her man his plot to destroy the people of god and she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should i do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of esther there is no priest in the book of esther there is no prophet in the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. 
A wife, a foolish woman would have told the king and said, King, her man wants to destroy us. Will you watch your beautiful bride go? See that? But a wise woman, when he gave her an opportunity, her honor, she discerned his mood and she said, Oh, king, I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you. It was her not honoring you that took her out of the place. Grant me the opportunity to present a banquet. And the king said, finally, I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily is a formula the king's interest first before your needs so esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally a man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. He, he's just doom. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. A man didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me honor is powerful this honor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to God dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to God dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time I have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister 
I will never, never dishonor the man of God, dishonor their protocol, dishonor their system. I will walk within what is provided. It's called honor. It's not weakness. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens. Dishonor. 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. When they say mention your streams of income, don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry. Say honor. A wise man will clap for you. Honor is powerful. It can change your life. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Honor is powerful. I continue to walk this law like a chess. And you walk this law, there is no power in existence. I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry. I truly love them and I honor them. We prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way, a token of honor. Honor is very powerful. Let me tell you this. When God makes men like you, no matter what is done, a, within the context of that generation, you have entered your Sabbath. It is not enough for God to like you alone. The men he uses must like you. God can tell Pastor Femi, come Pastor Femi, I'm rounding up. God can tell Pastor Femi to bless me. He can reject that instruction. While he's struggling with obedience, I'm suffering. I will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed, but it will remain in the dream. God agreed, a man disagreed, I'm paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry please hear me you are part of this spiritual family one of the signature traits of your life must be honored don't talk to people anyhow you see elderly people you insult everybody huh no an elderly woman is carrying something mark please can i help you oh i'm a man of god so what demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence don't dishonor our children you see my children here even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man... If not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. Is it dishonor? Is why many people are poor and broke. They see every rich man and just think he was dash, he was luck. No. Every successful man, especially a successful young man. You know, one time we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep you are going like this all around because you are tired and then you know the person was trying to ah you're a young man what kind of sleep is this i just looked at him and i nodded my head I said you see this is the kind of thing you are talking about you are not asking why i'm seated where you are seated at my age it's, it's not it's, it's not i don't mean to be sarcastic i don't mean to be sarcastic The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding results. Listen to me. 
one day get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job don't say it's my younger brother it's my younger sister it's my when i was in in, in ss uh, um, ss3 he was saying, all those all those superstitious trado african approach to life you, you you will be punished again and again i have a great deal of respect for people who honor me sincerely if you if you if you trivialize what i represent i will not fight you but i will never prophesy to you you will not be you will not be close you will not be around my life again because i'm going to waste my time i don't love i don't hate you i will not do that i will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old no i honor all men beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent they may be sincere but they are dangerous to your growth not to flatter you but please if you have 127 provinces it is not a bad thing to have a feast oh ahazaros 127 provinces is not a kiosk let us learn to practice honor some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents your father is a prof your mother is a prof you are there sweeping the ground in life you can say daddy mommy please whatever i've done whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president. And is that pioneer grace I want? I knelt down. When you are too big to honor, you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've held the protocol to see just be open be open I will see how I will adjust anything not that you stand and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here teach your children to honor don't see a stranger and come and slap him you spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you. There are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague. They are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi uh, pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you I never find a man that carries something I need and I will keep quiet with it now one day God will give you an opportunity to see how I honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret I had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room I was granted the opportunity and the tour and I said please grant me the grace I say, what is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. 
when I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money, but he has character. He's a grace and he's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize, our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries, please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him, please help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. My life is changing. Prophesy to yourself. I'm rising by the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. One minute and we're done. Outside, pray. Online, please pray. The keys of the kingdom, the mysteries by which we reign, enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man. Hallelujah. Father, we desire to bear fruit. We love you and we want to attain unto that height, that image, that stature. We want to be a people very spiritual. We want to be a people very transformed. We want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom, but we also seek to be agents of national transformation. That our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization. Our lives will not be a nuisance to 
any society we want to be prosperous we contend for kingdom influence we want to walk in superior dimensions of the gift of the spirit quicken our understanding oh god you have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of jesus christ give us a heart of flesh give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in jesus name i pray amen and amen now very quickly our time is up again i i sincerely apologize um you are here please listen i want to make the altar call in one minute you are here and listening to me teach the holy spirit began to speak to you about the need to completely surrender your heart to jesus you are here inside outside overflows and online whatever nation of the world or you are here please let's minimize movement you are here and you are saying apostle i love jesus but at one point or the other my life has gone haywire and i need restoration please we have just one minute for you if you are in that category inside outside wherever you will need to run if you have to come please i'd like you to rush and come stand here let me have the honor of praying for you and that from the depth of my heart god bless you don't wait for anyone to come win that war tonight god bless you god bless you koinonia celebrate them they are coming everywhere from inside and from outside god is giving you a new beginning the Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Celebrate those who are coming from outside. This is a family, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like coming to receive an award. You are not coming to a funeral. Jesus is calling you. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them please, quickly. I'm not sure I just know that I love the things of God but I cannot remember making a commitment for Jesus please join them quickly we have a few seconds if you're coming from outside please rush you're coming from outside please rush whoever comes to him the Bible declares that he will in no way wise cast away hallelujah thank you thank you so much I honor every one of you for um, the courage to come takes a lot of courage aside from the convicting power of the spirit it also there is a psychology to it it takes a lot of courage I salute you for winning this war please lift your right hand if you will and I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart you're not just reciting a poem Jesus is here if you want to join them please come quickly while they pray say after me Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I receive your life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I am saved I move upward and I move forward only please keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you I stretch my hands over these ones and I present to you the ones you died for it's an honor to lead these precious people you have so loved before your throne and to present them to you I pray that the grace that keeps will keep you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye